please. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good oh, evening good to everyone, depending on which part of the globe you're calling in for. And I think it's fantastic that we're all able to link up in this way. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Orlando Fernandez, who I know from the European School, both last year in Eretria and also the previous year in Pescia. And you're in for a treat this afternoon because his uh, talks are interesting and extremely lively. Now, Orlando was born and raised under the volcanoes of uh, Mexico City, <laughs> and he had his first contact with the esoteric at the heart of traditional Mexican esoteric practices. And while reading pure mathematics at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico, he discovered the tarot. And this has remained his main spiritual interest because he believes that it's one of the most effective tools for the development of consciousness. He's participated in the work of several esoteric organizations, including the Theosophical Society. And in 2016, he completed a thesis on Western esotericism at the University of Exeter on the influence of the esoteric imagination on science. So welcome Orlando and please take it away. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Just give him one minute, Orlando. I have to mute everyone. Just a minute. Give me one minute and then I have to unmute you. Okay, please, you can start. Okay, well, um, thank you very much for this nice introduction and thank you very much for inviting me to, to uh, these uh, talks. It's a very interesting experience as everybody has already mentioned this new way of connecting that we have been forced to to do out of the the experience of the of the virus that um, that we are going through so it is great um, great idea so erica has to be uh, congratulated because uh, she this is an opportunity to meet and keep uh, going the work so in uh, in some of the talks that i have participated in in, uh, in the European school. I always show some of the tarot cards uh, that I use and explain here and there some of the symbols and these uh, raise some interest. And of course, then they, they were asking if we could have a more thorough uh, introduction to, to the symbolism of the tarot and the tarot as a tool for expansion of consciousness. Now, this is a a view of the tarot a little bit different from the common view, and I will explain that a little bit. But the tarot offers important clues to the student of the esoteric mysteries. And many important esotericists agree on this, not less uh, Madame uh, Blavatsky, Elena Petrovna Blavatsky, who knew well the tarot, and then he, she wrote many times about the tarot, Especially, I like this one. There are two tarots, the will, the will purely esoteric, and the Western tarot, Kabbalistical, remodeled by Shemitz, a branch so much younger than the Aryans. And even the Hamitz, the later tarot, is to be read from right to left, like Arabic and Hebrew writing. And uh, the, the fact, I, I'm very interested in this, in this quote, but she, because she is uh, talking about the esoteric tarot, and this is there is a legend about an esoteric tarot that has never been published that is used by highly advanced members of the uh, initiates maybe. and then uh the tarots that are published some of them are closer to that tarot because some people have seen that tarot and then they have to so it is a very interesting question so she was interested and that is confirmed in some way by Pidi Uspensky, that you may know by because he's the author of the very famous Tertium Organum of 1913. And he remarks that H.P. Blavatsky mentions the tarot in her words, and we have some reason for believing that she studied the tarot. It is known that she loved to play patience. We do not know what she read in the cards as she played this game. 
that the author was told that Madame Blavatsky searched persistently and for a long time for a manuscript of the tarot. There you have it, some uh, occult gossip, so to speak. So Madame Blavatsky was interested in the tarot and had, had given it some value. Important thing that I want to comment is, well, P.D. Ospensky continues in his book saying something very interesting. He says that the tarot represents a summary of the hermetic sciences the Kabbalah, alchemy, astrology, and magic with their different divisions. All these sciences really represent one system of a very broad and deep psychological investigation of the nature of man. So it's not only Uspensky, but there are many other uh, important occult writers, esoteric writers, that give uh, Tarot a very, very important role. They, they, it, it is a, it's not just a game, it's something that some of them equate even to the Bible or to the, to the Great Pyramid. And this, um, this influence on many uh, authors, many esoteric authors, can be dated back to a very particular point. Uh, to, is the revival of occult studies that began in France in 1854 with the publication of Dogma Ritual de l'Ordre Magie, uh, translated in English as Dogma and Ritual of Transcendental Magic. It was translated by Waite. And the book, the Dogma Ritual de l'Ordre Magic, was, of course, written by the great 19th century occultist Eliphas Levy, who was also an influence on, on, on Blavatsky. And in this, in, in that it's a, a first in a series of publications in which Levy mentions the tarot at his most important source of information and aspiration. He writes, as an erudite Kabbalistic book, all combinations of which reveal the harmonies preexisting between signs, letters, and numbers, the practical value of tarot is truly and above all marvelous. A prisoner devoid of books, had he only a tarot of which he knew how to make use, could in a few years acquire a universal science and converse with an unequal doctrine and inexhaustible elephant. Well, this is a, a very this is a very big view on tarot, and that is the, the the view that we are adopting and then we are trying to to, to convey. In, in this publication in, in Dogma and Ritual is Levy also for the first time, at least exoterically, is where he, he shows the relationship between the, the tarot and the tree of life. Allegedly with a lot of veils. He did that in his book with a lot of veils. So what is the tarot? So the tarot is a pack of cards containing 78 images. I have a tarot here. I don't know, can it be seen? He'll say yes, uh, yeah. So it is, this is the one that I have here is the Tarot of Marseille. It's, a, it's an old tarot. And then you, it's divided in two as every other tarot. Yeah? It's divided in the major arcana, which are 22 cards. The 22 cards have a, a title, a number, and the new versions, the other versions, the one that I will use, it, it has related as well an Hebrew letter. The minor arcana, these are 56 cards divided in four sets, and they are composed each set of, 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 of uh, numbered cards from one, two, three, four, until 10. And they contain, in addition, a king, a queen, a knight, and a page. And this is a, these are associated with, with the tree of life. I, 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 I will show you uh the association yeah um the tarot that i am associating there and the colors there this is the the the, the tree of life with the colors associated with the world of creation and the and and the, and the color and the cards that i have there are these cards the set that i particularly use this is that has a particularity when you buy it it's in black and white 
is in black and white because one of the practice of tarot is making tarot pures, painting it. There are instructions to paint it. There are instructions to, to how to use it, etc. So this is again uh, the tarot cards that have a, if you can see the, the, the tarot card, uh, there is the image and then there is a title, the full, uh, an Hebrew letter, in this case, a left and then a number. So that is, and then you have the 22 cards that you can paint, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it said that uh, the tarot was invented by a group of adepts that were thoroughly familiar with the visual archetypal patterns and the occult use of imagery for the development of cosmic states of consciousness whose aim was to embody the most important doctrines about the spiritual principles and occult powers of consciousness in a book of pictures. Yeah? This device of making pictures will make the book independent, independent of any particular language so people can communicate the higher knowledge using, using images. So these pictorial images were arranged in combinations that depended upon the occult harmonies of numbers. So there is a, a stream of Pythagorism, very strong, and expressing archetypic, archetypical ideas instead of words. And the tarot was designed very, uh, very emphatically then to serve two main purposes. The first, to preserve and transmit esoteric teaching, high esoteric teaching, that will be available for those who are trained in the correct way of reading it. But secondly, and this is very important, to function as a practical tool to evoke a specific mystical, intellectual, and emotional responses from the inner consciousness of the student who has been taught how to look at it. It's about looking at it, yeah? So I want to stress this practical aspect of the tarot. This is a view of the tarot that contrasts a little bit with the normal thinking of the tarot about playing cards. There is a game of tarot that is still played today. That's how it came out, the tarot, uh, historically. And there is also a way to use tarot making readings like, uh, like uh, uh, predicting the future or, or, or things like that. But the, the use of the tarot that I am uh, exposing is much more mystical use of the tarot. These, the tarot cards are mandalas, more close to mandalas, in which can be arranged in several ways. Look at them, meditate on them, and obtain and connect with uh, an esoteric knowledge, but also, very importantly, to produce an effect, an effect on the person using it. So it's not innocent. It is, it is a uh, so it's not a game, it's not fortune telling, is a device, and this is uh, the opinion of many occult writers, that it's a device to put in practice esoteric knowledge. And this is important because many, as you may know, many occult organizations, many occult movements suffer from practical tools. Yeah? There is a lot of theory, a lot of, of talking, but there is, uh, there is very little practice. So, this, uh, the tarot comes to fulfill an important function about, um, about um, the practical aspect and, and the use of the spiritual wisdom to change oneself for the alchemical goal of the great work and, and all that. So the basic of stru of structure of the tarot, of the tour, uh, dedicated to the spiritual evolution of, of, of humanity, was done using the Western mystery system of numbers and letters that is afforded by the Kabbalah, which is a very complete framework for initiation that has been taught orally to properly prepare aspirants for many centuries, and it's still done. So this is the basic structure that is, the, the, the basic structure is depicted in the, in the symbol of, of the tree of life. And then you see there the, the, the cards, of, here is the card zero, uh, connecting the white sphere with the great sphere, Keter with Chokmah, then there is card number one, etc., etc. It's a particular, there are variations of this, not, uh, not everybody agrees, but these are systems in which one gets involved and gets used to it. We, we, one important thing is to get used to the system that one adopts. 
we are adopt I am showing you one system that it is very uh, one of the many systems that are popular. This is the this is a very very well known. So that, that's what I am showing. Um, now it is also suggested that the study of this wisdom recorded in the tarot is begun through the study and use of the 22nd major trumps. So the first, the first uh, 22 cards is the first step to get into the wisdom, this way of, of embracing the tarot. The philosophy embraced by the, by the minor arcana is more subtle and supposes a mastery of what has been taught or what has been acquired not only in terms of knowledge, but also in terms of skills and changes that are proposed or affected with the major keys. So, and then we are going to follow this advice in, in, in this lecture. We will concentrate in the major arcana and then organizing this introduction according to traditional Hebrew division of the 22 letters in three sets. So uh, there you have the, the, the tarot that I am using. It's a tarot drawn by Jesse Burns Park under the direction of Paul Foster Case. Paul Foster Case was an American occultist, uh, considered one of the most important authorities on tarot. You know, a lot of my, my uh, approach to the tarot comes from him. That is, a, he, as you, as you saw, these cards come in black and white. I'm showing there, they're all painted. Yeah, there are many versions. Interesting thing is that I never seen two, two sets of cards colored by different people that look alike. They really, when one does the experience of painting the cards, there is a process of assimilation that is very personal, very intimate. And if you do several of these through your lifetime, the painting changes. It, it gives you a very different, it, it gives you a history of your inner evolution, so to speak. So these are, these are, this is a version that is there. They are arranged in a very particular form. This is the major arcana. This is called the, the Tarot Tableau. And it is, uh, theosophists will like this very much because it's arranged in seven columns. And the seven columns is a depiction of the inner process of enlightenment, starting from the first row, which is a state of ignorance, but, but desire of progressing through the steps of realization, illumination, etc., until the, the, the final step, which is the full, full enlightenment. So it is a, this is an interesting, and then crowned all by the full, of which we will talk a little bit today. So that's the tarot that I am using. You see it in color now. And then the organization then, as I was saying, there is, a, we, the, there is this way of organizing the letters of the Hebrew alphabet and then the corresponding tarot keys. The first three mother letters, Aleph, Mem, and Shin, which correspond to the zero, the full, uh, the hanged man, key 12, and judgment, key 20. And these represent transcendental states of consciousness. We will talk about them uh, in a minute. But then you have also the seven double letters, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Kaf, Be, Rash, and Tab, associated with those, with those tarot keys that are also associated with the planets, and the 12 symbols that are associated following the teachings of the Sefer Yetzirah, a very, very famous and, and basic um, uh, Kabbalistic book, in which these letters are associated with the... With the with the signs, with astrological signs. So there is a astrological core undercurrent going through the tarot. And these are the, the, the 12 symbols. We will not talk today neither about the doubles, neither about the symbols, because there is too much. I will concentrate in the three mothers, in the fool, the hanged man, and judgment. So let's start with the symbolism of the fool. Now, the fool symbolizes in in particularly state of superconsciousness. His number is zero. In, in, a, in the analysis of, a, of the symbolism of a tarot key, there is a systematic procedure. There is the letter, the title, and the number. 
and then that that give a first uh, meaning to the car and then the analysis of the picture well there is the the, the whole picture that we consider that in this case is a is a young fellow at the border of a cliff walking ready to fall down yeah with a dog side so there is a there is this image but the 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 way to read the cards in their symbolism is, is from high from up to bottom and from right to left and the very very first symbol that we encounter then there is the is the sun it's a white sun which is a reference to Keter, because you remember the this these cards in particular in particular this design of cards is very closely associated with their arrangement on the tree of life the particularity of this version of the tarot cards is that they don't contain veils they mean what they say other cards that are trying to convey this uh this wisdom some of them convey have veil veils on them these cards don't do that these cards mean what they want to mean there are no tricks there are secrets of course but the secrets are more something that we need to discover more than purposefully bales placed there to to deviate the attention so these cards are then very closely designed following the the cabalistic uh doctrines contained in the tree of life and the full connecting the very first sephira with the second sephira has as its source the sun that white sun which white is the color of the of kettle sorry it, it is it is the source but then let's go to analyze or to or to understand what it is meaning by the by the title and by the number and i and and uh, aleph means ox yeah and it means the power of uh, the breath um the, the cultural power oxes were in antiquity the motor of agriculture uh, uh, and then its power it is um it is uh, the title the, the 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 letter represents something as strong a force that is pushing pushing forward the full the title it makes reference to air this card represents air subcon super consciousness and it has a teaching about breathing yeah in its in its uh, yellow background is making reference to some practices about breathing breathing is one of the most uh, guarded secrets or called secrets of how to of uh, of uh, practical practical tool yeah because in air we breathe sunlight the doctrine about the sun and sunlight is very evident through the whole cards in this card we have the sun the white sun the power we have the feather and the which is a reference to eagles earth and the power represented by the eagle and also you have the grass in the in the head which are vegetables these vegetables are a form of um the, the form obtain grasp the power of the sun and serve as as nourishment so there is a teaching there about uh, about how does the so solar energy enters the body and where does it get concentrated to produce higher states of consciousness this is a card that represents a higher state of consciousness super consciousness now a very important detail in this card and some people say is the more important detail in the whole tarot is the belt the belt it is it is uh, holding the, the 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 girdle the 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 garment of the fool the garment is fully symbolic you see those uh, spheres they may references to the to the tree of life there is a whole positive as positivity statement they are eight spoken because eight has references to this solar energy you have you have you see there in the top to the right you see the sun and the moon and if you were to see it more uh, bigger you have a fire in the middle which because one association to the full is called the fiery intelligence making this reference to the soul so one of the important uh, uh, meanings of the of the of the of the car is the belt the belt means time if so uh, it, it shows seven circles but it is made of 12 
and it made reference to the to the to the zodiac. So, so it is very related to the time and the way it is put. It is an esoteric teaching about the importance and the artificiality of time. The fool, as you see there, is conveys confidence. The reaction that it is expected to produce is is that that excitement that we have when we are at the top of an enterprise, when we are beginning, is the card of beginning, before actually commencing that point in which we are beginning to start something that that excitement going to the from the top he is aligned to the to the top of the mountains that you can see behind that are also color white making reference to abstract to abstract principles and and um, mathematical principles esoteric mathematical principles and ready to go to the valley of experience so this is a card which gets it conveys this knowledge about the start, the energy, the one life that we use in all of our endeavors is a card that is invoked at the very beginning of any operation of any kind and ready to go to the valley of experience with that excitement and that uh, and that uh, strength that can be uh, obtained by invoking the one life. One particular and important detail, detail is the dog. The dog represents the intellect. And the, the important detail is that in all cards, the dog was biting the legs of the fool. And the, and the meaning was that in the past, the intellect was not helping on the spiritual endeavor. But we need the intellect. And the intellect is a good companion. And it's a, a companion that helps us to advance, but is not the master. The master is this vision the, the the fool is seeing in a direction that is of great symbolic value. There is in other cards, and this is an important point, the cards work together. The cards are not isolated symbols. There is a lot of, when you are studying the card, there are symbols that you see in other cards that you can place in another card to give it meaning. In another card, in card 13, there is a seed. The, and in another card, there is a man. What it is looking at is to the seed of a higher vision of man. That's the enterprise in which the fool is getting involved with. We, so that is what he is aiming for. So, okay. So this is a this is a brief uh, a brief uh, commentary on the symbolism of the fool. Um, so use it when you are dubious, when you are lack of excitement. This card has the power. Of, of lifting, of bringing us back to the source, the one power, so that we can go and conquer the world. That's what it means, that's what it conveys, and that's what it is used for. Now, the Hanged Man. The Hanged Man is another experience. It is, it is uh, following the same uh, pattern of, of analysis of the symbolism. It is associated with the letter Mem. Mem means waters, water. And uh, this card is associated with the perception of the, a similar transcendental state as, as that one portrayed by the food, but with a different slant. Is the, is the perception of water. Now, water in the alchemical, in the alchemical text, you, you may have read, that is not the normal water, is something different. The occult water is by no means the same as drinking water. For example, in the Turba Philosophorum, it says the ignorant, when they hear us name water, they think it is water of the clouds. But if they understood our books, they should know it to be a permanent or fixed water. And then many alchemists give many references, etc. This water, what it means, is the electromagnetic magical agent. What has been called Ruach and Prana. And this gives a link to the to the air uh, the part depicted in the in Kisiro. So you see, there is always a linkage, there is always a working together with the Tarot key. And um, it means basically droplets of electromagnetic magical uh, magical agent that work 
that tap flows and make uh, and make all kinds of watery things and flows and come from the sky, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there is this perception about the uh, the reality of substance. Yeah, we know from scientific fact that sub the solidity of substance is an appearance only. The most what is in substance is emptiness. There is very few or sub actual something. So this perception is a reversal of the normal perception of what matter is of and what the, the world is made of. So then this law or, of reversal is what it is very, very evidently depicted in the hanged man. It's a man turned upside down, his head below the surface of the, of the earth, looking at the root, looking behind. So he is really seeing, he is hanging from, uh, from some gallows, which have the form of a letter tab, which is the last letter of the, of the Hebrew alphabet, which is at the center. So he is hooked, hooked in this one life, and it has affected a reversal of his of his view of of, of, uh, of the world. Now, this reversal, this law of reversal, is something that it is very important. It's one of the most important practical uh, practices in esoteric in the esoteric teaching, practical esoteric teaching, to reverse conditions. So, uh, this uh, what does this mean? To reverse conditions of disease, misery, poverty, failure, which are experienced by most people, and substitute for those conditions the opposites of health, happiness, prosperity, and success, is to, it is necessary to think, speak, and act in, way, in ways which are the reverse of those in which most people think, speak, and act. That's the teaching. And this teaching has been expressed in many ways, in many doctrines, for example, Buddha, a statement of this law is at the beginning of the Dhammapada, uh, which says, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. It is founded on our thoughts. It is made up of our thoughts. If a man speaks or acts with a pure thought, happiness follows him like a shadow that never leaves him. Hatred does not cease by hatred at any time. Hatred ceases by love. This is an old rule. So it is... So this is teaching, this is the conveying the idea that we need to completely reverse our point of view. And this has a relation with the title of the fool, because the wisdom of the fool is foolishness, it appears like foolishness for the common for the common man. That is that is a more or less the common the the comment between these two these two cars. So this this practical, very practical simple teaching of you want to have something different in your life think different yeah the start comes from the mind and then the mind is very very close to this card because it's mem mim man all these uh, onomatopoeia all these um, uh, words are are related the fact that this card is called the hanged man makes reference uh, to this spiritual experience that people have called samadhi, which is a direct vision of the of the, of the world. So I will not go um, too much more on on this on this card. I could I could pro, uh, talk for a long time about the symbolism of his dress, the the number four that he is making with his legs, some numerical aspects that are, that are in all the cards are always numbers for example in the in the lower part of his dress this this uh, this figure parallelepiped is in a way showing the same name that it is in the garment of the fool yod he by the by the number so there are connections so i'm just pointing them out so that you know that those things exist but i want to talk i don't have much time uh, left but so i want to spend the last uh, minutes talking about the judgment the judgment associated with the fire. So we have the air, then we have the water, we have the fire. These three elements are also associated with the three gunas, or in alchemy, in the in the in the Western mysteries, are called uh, sulfur, mercury, uh, mercury, sulfur, and salt. This is sulfur. The the full is mercury, and uh, the the hanged man is salt. 
and they have a psychological function, superconsciousness, higher consciousness, and subconsciousness. This is this is the symbol of self-consciousness of, of sulfur, and it is the active principle in, in some way. Now, Shin, the letter Shin, it is the fire of the spirit. She, yeah, it represents is the holy letter. It's a it's a holy letter because in the number in using the numbers, well, a technique that is called gematria, based on the association of numbers with with letters. This has the same number of the every word ruach elohim, which is the life breath. So it's again breath connected to the three cards about the uh, about the high high spirit. So this ha this has a very close connection as well to the other cards. For example. The, this is fire, and the intelligence associated with key zero is the fiery intelligence. So, so there are collections. The intelligence associated with with this one is the perpetual intelligence, and points out to a mode of consciousness correct, that corresponds to the letter the letter Shin. Now, the letter Shin, the, it's uh, it's when it, you add the numbers, it adds to three hundred and sixty. That make reference to a circle. The circle is a zero, and then you have the association again with the 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 the, the zero card. The main idea here is that these are mode of consciousness in which we can participate. Now, um, I want to point out to 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 two things mainly in this card. The first one is that in contrast with the other cards, if you see the title, the number, and the sheen, they are not separated by lines. If you see the other cards. There are lines. This one doesn't have lines because it's making reference to an experience of unity, of unification. is is the achievement of the unification. And if you see the the, the figures there, who represent the psychological aspects of, of of a human being, they are coming out of coffins. The coffins represent three dimensional consciousness. This is the experience of the four dimensionality of the world. This is the experience. The, the, this four dimensionality that Uspensky wrote about, this uh, this is a little bit re represented by uh, by this uh, by by this design, but by this detail of the design, the clouds, the angel is the angel Gabriel, which is um, a which is an angel of water associated with Jesol, a sphere of water, but it is also relating this card to to key twelve. But it's the clouds behind the, the Gabriel are in a form of eight, representing four dimensions. So the whole thing it is as it is giving an information about how and what happens in this experience of unification coming out of the three-dimensional, being born to a new life, being born to a new way of seeing things. There are two things that I want to remark very importantly. One is the trumpet, it's about sound. And then you see seven seven lines coming there, making reference to the seven grades of the of the scale, and the teaching of sound is also very important in the mysteries. We have been talking about breath, about air, and sound is a form that breath takes. So the, all the through the tarot cards there is a teaching about how to use breath in the form of sound, and the trumpet it is making this uh, this announcement. Is the angel of the annunciation if it comes out? It's a, is a achievement of the great work. The great work reference is made by the banner. The banner is traditionally a five times five banner, and is divided in in nine, uh, which is the number of red squares. If you divide the the, the banner in in five, and then you make five times five, the red squares are uh, indicate um, nine. And the others are 16. And that makes reference to a very important Pythagorean symbol, the, the triangle rectangle of three, four, and five, uh, which is a very famous uh, rectangle that symbolizes the achievement of the great work. So there you have there are other references, the reference to the to the great work and the and its accomplishment. Other symbols are, for example, the figures are gray, which means that they are associated with the second sephirah, whose color is gray, and also because there is the blending of black and white in perfect unison. Very importantly, the fact that the woman is the active principle has a particular teaching about how those these experiences come. The man, 
that symbolizes the active mind, the intellect, the self-conscious in intellect is brought to the minimum. Whereas the woman who represents, let's say the subconscious activities of the mind is active, is the one that it is operative in this experience of, transcend uh, of tra transcendence. So this, um, the, the, this, exp the, this card is giving us all this, uh, all this information. It is provoking a reaction, a subconscious reaction, so that this knowledge of the mysteries can come up in our mind and get articulated. All these with the cards, the, studying the cards in this way, it gives a language so that the mystery, the, the, the ageless wisdom can be obtaining and articulated and as i said before use in an effective in an effective uh, uh in an effective way so that we can make make use of it um we have water we have air we have water we have fire and then we have earth now this is not one of the great mothers uh, one of the mother letters but i am just putting it there so that to complete the the four elements and this, uh, and to exemplify a little bit how all the cards are in connected and what I was saying that we really cannot study the cards in isolation. It's just a whole that can be grasped in its own, in its own way, because this card represents the earth, but also represent the planet Saturn, the planet of the earth, the planet of concretization, the planet of practice, the planet of living in the world. And it's also a card associated with cosmic consciousness, which is another form of transcendental experience. This is this, the, the final step in evolution of individuality. But it's T20, and then there is T21, which is what comes after. And what comes after is a mastery of the world. So all this, this point, this, uh, this little detail of ones that we have achieved the mastery, the, the full integration and oneness with the inner world, then there comes the mastery of the world. So meaning this world is not to be, is not the abandonment of the world, but it is the embracing, the, the conquest, the dominion of the world in all its glory for the good in full wisdom, etc. So this is the this is a very positive and uplifting detail. We live our life here in this world to become masters of it and and bring beauty, joy, all this excitement that it is represented by Kisiro, this, all this energy and uh, of goodness and good willing and well-being. So I think that my time is kind of up, Erika.